Welcome to my world. Another day, another time, another period for knowledge acquisition. Knowledge is power, health is well. Today, the topic I have is infection of the lung. Why sputum? That question is very germane because most time the sputum that you have to produce is very, very important because that's where the majority of the causative agents of lung infections are resident. The sputum is produced from deep cough, which brings out that exudate, the exudate of the lung itself. So it has to be deep. It cannot just be uh, the saliva. It has to be deep, deep cough. Because when your lung is affected or infected, the uh, areas that are pus and all these exudates usually come out when the patient coughs out. That cough is, that productive cough is what is called sputum. The sputum that comes out is what is now cultured to examine the contents of that sputum to now establish whether it is a bacterial infection, fungal infection, viral infection, or possibly cancer. You, we know of tuberculosis, but tuberculosis is a uh, bacterium, mycobacterium uh, tuberculosis. But whatever it is, the lung infection shows us either pneumonia, tuberculosis, even the COVID-19 that we experience is more of a lung uh, infection problem. That is where the situation of giving uh, oxygen when the patient cannot breathe very well. If you like what you are listening to, press the like button. Subscribe. Infection of the lungs. Why sputum? Outline. Objective. Introduction. Sample collection. Lab investigation. And uh, conclusion. The objective. To teach the people how to collect a quality sample that will aid the accurate diagnosis of the infectious agents. Introduction. The lung produces mucus, also known as meng or sputum, especially when it's in hairs. It consists of mucine and other proteins. It keeps the thin, delicate tissue of the respiratory tract moist, protects it, and helps trap and remove foreign particles. When we talk of foreign particles, we are talking of things like bacteria, uh, fungus, uh, virus, or all of them. It's overproduction of this during infection and the body expels this excess by, by covering it up as sputum. Sample collection. When you look to the left, you see the non-sterile sample bottle that we just collect samples in to, for staining only. Why the sterile bottle is for culture and it helps to really diagnose the exact ailment. The, whether it is bacteria, you will be able to find the exact positive bacteria, fungus, uh, viruses, and uh, whatever. This is the person producing the sputum. Early in the morning, it's not you produce it any time. Very early in the morning, this sputum is thick. When you wake up, rinse the mouth, and then they, a, a deep breath, open the sterile bottle. If it's not the sterile bottle you need, that is just uh, microscopy that is there, then staining it could be just for the papulosis examination to confirm whether there are acid fast bacilli in the sputum. You all you just do is open the bottle and uh, cough it deep, cough, produce this sputum and ex expel it. The same thing you do to the sterile bottle, which must be aseptic enough. The laboratory investigation done are uh, one. Presumptive diagnosis from color, which the clinicians will always uh, probably do to send before sending it to the lab if it's convinced that this could be an uh, infection. Then the microscopy is done to stain, like uh, there's less split for ZN or gram stain or whatever. But if it needs deep uh, study where you want to know the exact organism, because the sensitivity that is antimicrobial 
agent that will kill it is necessary. And uh, there would even be drug abuse, which is a dangerous problem in itself. So the next stage is the culturing in the right medium. You cannot con culture fungi in bacterial medium. And you, there are some fastidious organisms that you need to culture in medium that can satisfy their need. These organisms will not grow if you culture them in medium that do, cannot meet their need. They will only grow, especially some might need X factors, some might even want blood. So you use the blood diggers, they have the sensitivity. The biopsy is collected where you, the, 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 the guy start element of other problems like cancer. Conclusion. The color of sputum could be white, indicating normal. It could be allergic and the bacteria, fibril, or fungal infection. But when it is red, yeah, this is usually malignancy, cancer, or tuberculosis. Tuberculosis, when it has hit in deep, uh, the lungs, they start coming out as blood. Brown, dirty, white, or yellow could be smokers or bacteria. This helps the medical laboratory scientists or medical microbiologists decide the cultural methods applicable. The correct quality of the collected sample is a mirror of the state of the lungs. When the lung is not healthy, a poorly collected sample is usually of salivary nature and rejected because it will give a false negative result. What we mean by false negative result is when you tell, you say the patient is healthy, whereas the patient is not healthy, there are infectious agents in that sample, but I mean in that patient, but it, the patient did not produce, the sputum probably produced something that will not show that. If the sputum is well collected in the right bottle at the right time and adequate quantity, the patient laboratory diagnosis will help in the effective treatment of his ailment.